Would you trade your life for your business? It's a crazy question, isn't it? Most of us would say no, yet this is the non-conscious choice we are making every day in our businesses. When we choose to work late, skip lunch, not make time to work out, fail to take time with our loved ones, and shortchange our sleep, this is what we are choosing. It's time to disrupt the grinded out discourse and reclaim our entrepreneurial journeys. After all, work should support life, not the other way around. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question. What has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling. I'm the business psychologist, the author of the Four Week Vacation and the How to Hire the Best series, as well as the founder of Tap the Potential, where we coach entrepreneurs like you to design sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. Because after all, we believe work supports life, not the other way around. Weekly on the Profit by Design podcast, we bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. Entrepreneurs, are you ready to take your life back from your business? I've got great news for you. The four-week vacation book is now available on Amazon. Finally! I'm so excited to share this book with you. Go to fourweekvacation.com, get a copy of your book, and check out all the bonuses. Today on the Profit by Design podcast, I thought it would be fun to give you a preview of the four-week vacation, and what better way to give you a preview of the four-week vacation than to share chapter one with you in its entirety here on the Profit by Design podcast. So the four-week vacation is in production for Audible, and you get to listen to the very first chapter of the book here with me on the Profit by Design podcast. I sincerely hope you enjoy it and it inspires you to take those action steps to take your life back from your business. Chapter one, there is a better way. It's crazy how many things fall in place when you speak them into existence. Brendan Wilkes. It's March, 2018. 20 entrepreneurs have gathered at my home for the Breakthroughs Retreat. We are outside by the pool, sitting under a covered veranda. The sun is out. Birds chirp in the background. Hot pink knockout roses are in bloom. Many participants left cold winter landscapes to enjoy the warmer Louisiana weather while basking in the camaraderie of their peers and enjoying time away from their businesses. Chuck has traveled from Wyoming. He is one of my early clients. Much of what I've learned about what works when it comes to building a sustainably profitable business that gives you your life back, I've learned while coaching Chuck and his peers in Riverton, Wyoming. Chuck is a hard worker. He rarely takes time off from work. I know that about him. But what he says when he takes the four-week vacation pledge stops me in my tracks. My why for taking a four-week vacation is that I've spent the last 40 years living and breathing overhead door. The longest I've taken off at one time is five days. I deserve this, I want this, and I am ready for it. Chuck, like so many of us, has devoted his life to the success of his company. He takes his responsibilities and obligations seriously. If Chuck says he will do something, you know it will happen. His customers and his team know this about him. It's a great quality and leader. Yet, this is a double-edged sword as the cost may be countless hours of time away from home, poor health, and missed experiences with loved ones. Chuck's business is profitable. He has paid off his line of credit. On more than one occasion, his accountant has paid him a personal visit to inquire as to what he is doing. His accountant is curious because in some years, Chuck's is the only profitable business with whom his accountant works. Chuck's business isn't just a little profitable. When he implemented Profit First with us, Chuck more than tripled his profit in the first year and eliminated $140,000 of debt. Chuck currently has no debt and does not use a line of credit. 
it wasn't always this way. About five years ago, Chuck bid on the largest project his company ever performed. He learned a very difficult and painful lesson when he won that project. The project was outside the company's sweet spot, but the size of the project was enticing. Chuck lost money, a lot of money, keeping his word by completing that project. Although the project generated significant revenue, it cost Chuck's company more to perform the work than it made. Other clients became disgruntled as Chuck's team had to focus on the large project. Chuck was back to working 12 to 14 hour days, missing out on time with his wife and time at his cabin, all the while he was neglecting his health. It took multiple years to recover from the financial impact of that loss. Through the School of Hard Knocks, Chuck has learned that it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. He's also learned that running the business from its sweet spot is key to being profitable and creating a great place to work. The overhead door company of Riverton Lander is a great place to work. Chuck has made this a significant intention. In fact, it's what led him to initiate coaching with me. He wanted to be a better leader. He succeeded. According to a global survey by Gallup, Only 13% of employees are engaged. Chuck's team is different. When they responded to an employee survey that was sent to them when Chuck applied for Inc.'s Best Places to Work Awards, results showed that 92.31% of Chuck's team members are highly engaged. Chuck has implemented the Tap the Potential solution you will hear about in the pages ahead. He has designed a sustainably profitable business that gives him more time for what matters most, and more money in his bank account than ever. He has a team he relies upon to run the business in his absence. Did he take the four-week vacation he pledged to take? Yes. After all, Chuck is a man of his word. And you should know that his four-week vacation didn't go as planned. However, Chuck did get a couple of weeks off from work, which was much more vacation than he'd taken previously. When he returned, he looked at what did not work, set out to fix that, and set his business up so that his leadership team runs it in his absence. Now Chuck regularly takes three or four day weekends to spend time at his cabin. Recently, he underwent multiple back surgeries and lost his mother, all within a few weeks. Chuck wrote to me, I want to brag about my people. I have been successful so far in taking a five week vacation with no hiccups. I believe it will be six by the time I go back. I now know I can leave and not have to worry about anything. The next time I take a long leave of absence, it will be for pleasure. Thank you for all you have done for me and for making me into the person I am. By the way, Chuck ended up taking nine weeks off. Chuck plays full out, as all of us entrepreneurs do. I acknowledge you for that commitment. You are passionate about what you do, and it shows. Yet the way we do entrepreneurship is not sustainable. Long days in the office, missed time with family and friends, chronic sleep deprivation, no vacation, and working under constant pressure are common experiences for entrepreneurs everywhere. The traditional story of entrepreneurship, grind it out, work harder, pursue all the opportunities, keep clients happy at all costs, sacrifice your own pay to keep the business afloat. It's a destructive one. How destructive? Let's take a look. The Gallup Healthways Wellbeing Index reveals that 45% of entrepreneurs report being stressed and 34% of us report being worried a lot. According to a study by Michael Freeman in Small Business Economics, self-reported mental health concerns were present in 72% of entrepreneurs in their sample. The study found that mental health differences directly or indirectly affected 72% of the entrepreneurs in this sample, including those with a personal mental health history, 49%, and family mental health history among the asymptomatic entrepreneurs, 23%. The same study found that entrepreneurs were more likely than comparison participants and the general population to experience the following. Depression, 30% compared to 15% and 16.6%. ADHD, 29% compared to 5% and 4.4%. Addiction, 12% compared to 4 and 8.4%. Bipolar diagnosis, 11% compared to 1% and 4.4%. Business leaders are working an average of 72 hours per week 
putting off time off until some unforeseeable date in the future. Meanwhile, stress is taking its toll. The entrepreneur divorce rate is estimated to be five to 10 times higher than the regular divorce rate. And suicides by Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade, among other well-known entrepreneurs, have shown us just how devastating stress can be. That high we get from launching a business, it directly translates into becoming addicted to substances from caffeine to alcohol to drugs, further raising the risk of death by doing too much. While entrepreneurs are less likely to be obese, the Gallup Index reports that they're more likely to smoke. Some 17% of business owners smoke, more than office workers, managers, and other positions. Small business owners are creating two-thirds of net new jobs and accounting for 44% of U.S. economic activity. We entrepreneurs are often referred to as the backbone of the economy. Yet, who has our back as our businesses take over our lives? Entrepreneurship is in crisis, and it's time to sound the alarm bells. The way we are doing entrepreneurship is not sustainable. In this book, I ask and explore the following questions. Is there a better, more sustainable way to do entrepreneurship? Is there a different definition of success as an entrepreneur? What are the alternatives? What's possible when we decide to build sustainable, profitable, life-giving businesses that support our lives and the lives of our team members? What's possible when we decide our work will support our life, not the other way around? What's possible when we take our lives back? This is the story I've been wanting to write. This is the story I'm inviting you into. Let's write a new story of entrepreneurship. I'm in. Are you in? Entrepreneurial Burnout In 2019, the World Health Organization officially included burnout in the International Classification of Diseases as an Occupational Phenomenon. Burnout is a syndrome conceptualized as resulting from chronic workplace stress that has not been successfully managed. It is characterized by three dimensions. Feelings of energy depletion or exhaustion, emotional exhaustion, or the fatigue that comes from caring too much for too long. Increased mental distance from one's job, depletion of empathy, caring or compassion, along with feelings of negativism or cynicism related to one's job and decreased sense of accomplishment, feelings of futility, that nothing you do makes a difference. Although professional burnout has received research attention over the years, to this point, there has been very little research specific to entrepreneurial burnout. However, when I mention the word entrepreneurial burnout in a group of entrepreneurs, heads nod and people lean forward in their seats. There is immediate recognition of the experience. This leads me to believe entrepreneurial burnout is prevalent among us, and it is a phenomenon we have come to accept as just the way it is. It's time to change that. After all, that's what we entrepreneurs do best. We disrupt and we innovate. We've got this. Given the significant personal investment we entrepreneurs make in our professional work, often with little social support for buffering the challenges we face, I believe we are at great risk for burnout. More attention is needed on this topic with respect to what puts us at risk for burnout, how we can avoid burnout, and how to address symptoms of burnout as they arise. Beyond that, we need a solution for designing sustainably profitable businesses that are life-enhancing for all involved. It's time to put a stop to businesses that take over our lives. In the pages ahead, we will tackle all of these topics. What causes burnout? Burnout happens when we're under chronic stress. It happens when we hop from one crisis to the next, putting out one fire after another. It happens when we experience intense time pressure in our days to somehow get it all done. It happens when we're so wound up at night from the intensity of our days, we don't sleep. It happens when the stress and sleep deprivation compound and it's been months, years, since we felt truly rested and refreshed. Failure to complete the stress cycle. You wake up at 4 a.m. thinking about all you have to get done today, remembering the upsetting interaction you had with a team member yesterday, 
you know you need to resolve that situation today and tackle a long list of other items while you make sure there is enough money in the bank to cover payroll this week. Going back to sleep is pointless. You get up. Why not get into work early to get a head start on the day? All is humming along until one of your team members stops into your office with a problem from one of your top clients. The day unravels from there. Later that day, your child's school calls. Your child is sick and needs to be picked up early, so you drop what you're doing and go pick up your child, planning to squeeze in more work later that evening. Finally, at midnight, you drop into bed exhausted. It feels like you are playing the whack-a-mole game, hopping around putting out one fire after another, and that's just one day in the life of an entrepreneur. Throughout the day, stressors happened and may have been resolved. However, it's likely that we have not fully completed the stress cycle. The compounding effect of multiple incomplete stress cycles is what contributes to burnout. As Emily Nagoski and Amelia Nagoski write in their book, Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle. When we are chronically stressed, our brain and body react as though we are in constant danger. The fight or flight reaction spikes our cortisol and puts us at risk for a number of life-threatening conditions. When the parasympathetic nervous system does not have a chance to return our body to rest, our brains rewire themselves into a state where our immune system is compromised and we may face life-threatening damage to our organs and tissues. When we endure chronic stress, we are at risk for a simultaneous collapse of our psychological, neural, metabolic, and immune systems. Sometimes a complete recovery is very slow or even impossible. Even at less extreme levels, Chronic stress makes us prone to worrying and fear, which further increases our mental load and strains our bodies. It causes us to lose our motivation and drive to succeed. A stressed out person has difficulties in learning and regulating emotions, as well as problems with concentration and memory. This is important for us entrepreneurs to understand. It's no wonder we as entrepreneurs can have out of place emotional reactions with team members. It sets us up to be ineffective and also to make mistakes and oversights, which cause further stress. It's a negative downward spiral. Chronic stress is literally draining the life out of us. Would you trade your life for your business? It's a crazy question, isn't it? Most of us would say no, yet this is the non-conscious choice we are making every day in our businesses. When we choose to work late, skip lunch, not make time to work out, fail to take time with our loved ones, and shortchange our sleep, this is what we are choosing. It's time to disrupt the grinded out discourse and reclaim our entrepreneurial journeys. After all, work should support life, not the other way around. Paradoxically, the less we work, the more effective we become. You wouldn't intentionally deprive your team of leadership growth, would you? Yet, this is the non-conscious choice made daily when you decide to handle things yourself and require decisions to be filtered through you. Removing ourselves from the business allows our team members to grow into leaders. Removing ourselves from our businesses allows us to clear our brains in order to make more effective decisions, tap into our creativity, and innovate in ways that add value for our top clients. After all, we're human beings, not human doings. The Cautionary Tale of Elon Musk Elon Musk nearly traded his life for his company's life in 2018 when he was struggling to meet demands for Tesla and adjusting his automation process. He was working up to 120 hours a week and had not taken more than a week off since 2001 when he had malaria. Friends were concerned. His physical health was deteriorating. This past year has been the most difficult and painful year of my career, he told the New York Times. It was excruciating. Musk spent his entire birthday at work, choking up in a 60 Minutes interview as he recalled, all night, no friends, nothing. He'd stay in the factory for up to four days at a time, missing out on seeing his kids and nearly missing his brother's wedding, where he was the best man. The New York Times interview with Musk opened the country's eyes to the real dangers of entrepreneurial burnout. Forbes highlighted lessons from the vulnerabilities he shared, including everyone, including visionaries, heroes, entrepreneurs, and CEOs, needs to be aware of his vulnerabilities, which everyone has, and with that knowledge, take specific, 
relevant, concrete actions that protect both himself and his business. Forbes also added these cautionary tips. Number one, you can't function without sleep. Number two, you can't function without breaks. Number three, trust a couple of people. You have to find someone you can trust to step in for you and do your job well enough so you can sleep and take breaks and see your kids and take vacations. You also need to have a trusted advisor to talk to when you're uncertain or overwhelmed. And you need someone you trust who can tell you to stop when you should stop. That's at least three people to trust. Number four, there will be times when you can't function at your best. These come for everyone. Learn to recognize them and find the discipline to not make critical decisions or take consequential actions until you're back to your usual excellent baseline of functioning. Number five, have a primary care doctor and see her at least once a year and listen to her advice. Number six, protect yourself from an overload of information, especially meaningless, negative, and cruel comments about you from strangers. Number seven, don't forget to eat and hydrate. All night, no friends, nothing. Ariana Huffington's open letter to Elon Musk. On August 17, 2018, Ariana Huffington wrote an open letter to Elon Musk, pleading with him to reduce his working hours so that he could maintain his passion for innovating and changing the world. In your interview with The Times, you mentioned that you spent your recent 47th birthday, all 24 hours of it, at work, Huffington wrote. You've had days-long stretches where you shut yourself inside the Tesla factory and don't even go outside. You don't take vacations. There's no way you can connect with your amazing vision and creativity when you don't give yourself time to reconnect, not just with those you love, but also with yourself and your wisdom. This is not about working hard. Of course, you're always going to work hard. It's about working in a way that allows you to make your best decisions. Since 2018, Musk has cut back his work hours and focused more on his physical health and his sleep. Vacations, though, still take a backseat to Tesla and his other businesses. I can't take time off. I've got too much to do. Too many people depending on me. There is no one else. I'll just push through this rough period, and it will be better in a few months. George deflects his peers' suggestions that taking weekends off would clear his mind and help him make better decisions. He is sleeping four or few hours each night. Just weeks before this conversation, George shared remarkable wins happening in his business as he hired two A players who were taking responsibilities off his plate. He had taken a four-day vacation with his wife and children and returned to work feeling refreshed. He was sleeping more at night and experiencing renewed energy. In our Better Business, Better Life small group meeting, he declared, The next time I work so hard for so long, please remind me how good this feels and that I can take time off, even if I dig in and refuse. Now, just a few short weeks later, two of George's long-term team members have resigned because they did not like the increased accountability he'd put in as he fortified his systems. George and his newer team members are scrambling to take care of customers. George is dismissing his peers in our strategist's reminders of the value he experienced with some downtime from the business. He is digging in, refusing to take Saturdays and Sundays off. His argument that working seven days per week will allow him to get more done is convincing. Almost. Decision fatigue. Multiple times per day, we make decisions in our businesses. Some of these are big decisions with far-reaching consequences. Keith J. Cunningham opens The Road Less Stupid with a powerful question. How much money would you have right now if I gave you the ability to unwind any three financial decisions you have ever made? Cunningham points out our erroneous assumptions cause financial mistakes, and we pay the dumb tax. The passage of time reveals these assumptions and the financial consequences. Poor decisions and erroneous assumptions happen not because we are unintelligent. These happen simply because we don't take adequate time to think and seek feedback on our ideas. Thinking is critical to sustainable success in business, says Cunningham. All of us have paid the dumb tax. Entrepreneurs are particularly vulnerable to paying more dumb tax than we need to, simply because we are rushing around from one crisis to another, never stopping long enough to rest, 
much less take time to think. Cunningham insists we can avoid the dumb tax by making time to think and asking ourselves powerful questions. From what we eat for breakfast to which TV series we watch before bed, studies show that the average person makes up to 35,000 decisions per day. I'd venture we entrepreneurs make many more than that per day. Sure, plenty of those decisions are trivial, but many are serious, affecting our businesses, our lives, our families, and our communities. We all know the consequences of a poor decision to text while driving, for example. Let's focus on the impaired decision-making that occurs from working excessively long hours without sufficient rest. Many of us have wives, children, and team members who are the victims of our decisions, says Don Zerby, CEO of Ecolon Inc., There's a guy in my circle who leaves for work at six o'clock in the morning, comes home at nine o'clock at night, six days a week, works half the day on Sunday, and wonders why his wife is upset with him and why his kids don't know him. Social psychologist Roy Baumeister named our impaired decision-making decision fatigue based on the Freudian hypothesis of ego depletion. In triggers, creating behavior that lasts, becoming the person you want to be, Marshall Goldsmith explains, Ego depletion has been cited to explain all sorts of consumer behavior, from why we seek and accept a waiter's recommendation, we're so depleted we'll let a stranger choose our food, to why impulse items such as candy bars and tiny bottles of five-hour energy are located at the checkout counter, he writes. Like fuel in a gas tank, our self-control is finite and runs down with steady use. Under depletion's influence, Goldsmith explains, we're more likely to share intimate personal information, become aggressive, and give in to impulses. By the end of the day, we're worn down and vulnerable to foolish choices. When we are burned out, we are much more likely to make poor choices and set others up to be the victim of our decisions. These choices become the dumb tax we pay that keeps us working harder. George confides that he knew he needed to fire his long-term employees months ago. He'd procrastinated, hoping that stronger systems would improve their performance. One of these employees was his bookkeeper, who failed to pay several credit card bills on time, resulting in thousands of dollars in unnecessary interest accumulating on his accounts. George recalls stumbling across this data in his accounting system late one Friday evening as he was trying to track down a customer's invoice. He meant to return to it the next day and investigate further. In his sleep-deprived state, he forgot. A week later, another vendor called to complain the company was behind in paying an overdue invoice. George recalled his intent to investigate the lack of credit card payments as he opened his accounting system. This time, he dug in and discovered multiple unpaid invoices from multiple vendors, along with multiple unpaid credit card statements. In George's sleep-deprived state, he'd overlooked red flags about his bookkeeper's performance, and the financial impact was significant. He estimated well over $100,000 in dumb tax. Would more sleep and time off have prevented this? Most likely, yes. George is an astute business owner who has previously made good decisions that have resulted in solid business growth for the company. Yet, in a sleep-deprived, chronically stressed state, George's decision-making was impaired, and it cost him dearly. George knows all this. He has voiced it to us on multiple occasions, and yet he insists he is unable to take weekends off so that he can push through this rough period. I wonder, what else is George not seeing? Are we addicted to stress? It's an adrenaline rush to be running our own businesses. And just like the high we might get from a substance, we want more and more and more until productive stress turns to destructive stress. As the American Institute of Stress reports, stress and drugs have been shown to have the following side effects. Increased heart rate and blood pressure, increased blood sugar, breakdown of muscle tissue, decreased digestive functioning, ulcers, blood clotting, migraines, skin problems, premature aging, loss of brain cells, social isolation and loneliness, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, substance abuse, relationship problems, lack of focus, multitasking, and disengagement. In fact, a 20-year study by the University of London completed in the early 1990s 
found that unmanaged reactions to stress were a more dangerous risk factor for cancer and heart disease than either cigarette smoking or high cholesterol foods. And stress may even be as addictive as drugs. In addition to the hormones adrenaline and noradrenaline, stress also releases dopamine, a feel-good chemical. Dopamine encourages repeat behaviors by activating the reward center in our brain and may be at the heart of many addictive behaviors and substance abuse issues. Our families suffer too. George walks in the door talking on his cell phone. He texts throughout dinner. Sometimes he doesn't even come to dinner. He goes back to his home office, shuts his door, and works on his computer for hours into the night. I found him asleep at his desk at 2 a.m. more than once, George's wife confides. Vacation? He goes with us to the beach and brings his laptop. He works throughout the vacation. He was with us physically, but that was about it. The kids don't invite him to their recitals and ball games anymore. He shows up late, texts throughout, and misses their important moments. They've given up on their dad. It's sad. I miss him. I am angry with him. I know he means to support us, but the business has taken over our lives. I resent it. I am jealous. George doesn't get it, or maybe he does, and he just doesn't know what to do about it. Is your business giving you the quality of life you deserve? According to Tap the Potential's annual report on the state of entrepreneurship, probably not. Over 225 entrepreneurs completed our Better Business, Better Life assessment. Our assessment reveals that 88% of entrepreneurs are at risk for entrepreneurial burnout, reporting three or more symptoms of burnout, while almost one quarter, 22%, report experiencing 9 to 12 symptoms of burnout. Nearly 84% of respondents report fluctuating moods based on how the business is doing. 81% find it hard to switch off and not think about the business, while 53% report difficulty enjoying downtime away from work. More than half of respondents had neglected basic needs, such as sleep, healthy eating, or social interaction in the last three days because of work. Meanwhile, 61% feel as though it takes increasing effort to accomplish simple tasks. 33% report having greater and greater difficulty making decisions. Decision fatigue is real, and the costs are high. Nearly one-third, or 29%, report feeling discouraged about the future. Almost half, 48%, report feeling as though no one understands them and the stressors they experience while 41% say they are easily annoyed or irritated. This particular mix, discouragement about the future, feeling misunderstood, and being easily annoyed or irritated, is a recipe for acting in ways that exacerbate the very experiences that put us at risk for depression and other mental health conditions. Many entrepreneurs with whom I speak tell me they feel isolated and alone. Even though they may be surrounded by their team and family daily, Many feel as though no one gets them. Those who are not familiar with entrepreneurship believe we are in complete control of our time and choices, that signs of outward wealth, for example, a nice building or an expensive vehicle, indicate personal wealth. Some even believe entrepreneurs are greedy, focused on profit at the expense of their team members' paychecks, when in fact, the exact opposite is more likely true. No wonder entrepreneurs feel isolated and misunderstood. When they join a community, such as our Entrepreneurs Take Your Life Back community, there is a sense of camaraderie and relief to be among others who get what they are going through and are working together to make better businesses and better lives for all involved. Those with lower risk for burnout work substantially less than those who are at greater risk. From this, we can extrapolate that working less equates to less stress. Those who have been able to be away the longest from their business fully unplugged, are less stressed. The more days they are able to be away fully unplugged, the less stressed they are. How much are entrepreneurs working? The majority, 33%, report working 50 to 60 hours per week. 9% are working 60 to 70 hours per week, while 17% report working 70 plus hours per week. Those who have a lower risk for entrepreneurial burnout have more systems in place. Adding systems reduces risk for entrepreneurial burnout. Those at low risk for entrepreneurial burnout have almost double the number of systems in place as those who are at higher risk for burnout. 
those at lower risk for entrepreneurial burnout seem to be past the startup phase insofar as they have generally maximized foundational business systems, such as generating enough quality leads to support their business goals, collecting payment on time, and being able to pay expenses without accumulating debt. However, the majority of entrepreneurs are lacking more advanced business systems that position the business to run without the owner's direct involvement and add long-term value to the business, keeping the business overly dependent on the owner and stifling growth opportunities. The majority of entrepreneurs experience the business as being overly dependent on them. 85% say the business cannot run effectively without them. 55% say they cannot grow their business without working longer hours. 71% are not delegating activities that don't require their expertise. The business being overly dependent on the owner is likely due to the skills and systems gap with respect to hiring and developing a team. Systems for hiring, onboarding, retention, and team development are lacking in the majority of small businesses. 89% are lacking a system for attracting top performing team members. 70% lack a system for onboarding new hires. 81% are lacking a system for retaining top-performing team members. 79% are not engaging in regular team development activities. 67% report team members do not have a clear, measurable result for which they are responsible. 64% report no attention being paid to team members working from their strengths. 64% report team members do not have regular one-to-one meetings with a supervisor. When entrepreneurs put attention on developing these systems, we find their quality of life improves dramatically. With the publication of the How to Hire the Best series and the attention we have put on teaching business owners to coach and develop their teams, Tap the Potential has become the go-to resource for entrepreneurs committed to creating great places to work with thriving coaching cultures and highly engaged team members working from strengths. Those at higher risk for burnout seem to be more willing to invest time than money to improve their business. Many in both groups, those at risk and those at less risk for entrepreneurial burnout, were willing to spend six to 10 plus hours per week improving their business. Indeed, 61% report being willing to work six to 10 plus hours per week to improve their business, with 37% saying they are willing to work 10 plus hours per week to improve their business. However, Those at lower risk for entrepreneurial burnout are willing to invest more money and the same amount of time as those who are at higher risk. In other words, they likely are willing to invest monetarily in training, coaching, and leadership development to improve their effectiveness. That combination, a willingness to invest time and money, likely leads to more effective use of time as the business grows. It's quite possible that those who are at most risk for entrepreneurial burnout do not value their time appropriately, believing they will somehow work their way to a higher quality of life. They may be willing to forego investing appropriately in themselves to gain the skills needed to free themselves from the day-to-day demands of the business. Working more is not the answer. Working less and working more effectively is the answer. This requires investing in coaching and training to learn the most effective use of time as a business owner. Later in the book, I will share with you my chart of $10,000 an hour activities, which is a very useful tool to support you in focusing your time and energy in the most effective ways. Those with more years in business and higher revenue are at less risk for burnout. Those with lower risk for entrepreneurial burnout have twice as many years of experience in business as those who are at greater risk. Those entrepreneurs who are at lower risk for entrepreneurial burnout achieve three times the revenue of those who are at higher risk. From this, we can conclude that the early years of being in business are the ones in which entrepreneurs are at greatest risk. This makes sense as these years typically are the years in which, in an effort to make ends meet, entrepreneurs often perform multiple roles in the business. Our data also revealed four pillars to high quality of life for entrepreneurs. These map onto the Tap the Potential solution and will be detailed in Chapter 8. Ask yourself, what have you sacrificed for the sake of your business? 
For example, time with family, your health, sleep, paying yourself appropriately as the owner, missed events with loved ones, etc. What are you no longer willing to sacrifice for the sake of your business? Is your business giving you the quality of life you deserve? Take a step forward. Take Tap the Potential's Better Business, Better Life Assessment. Tap the Potential's Better Business, Better Life Assessment is a -a one-of-a-kind assessment. There is no other assessment for entrepreneurs that examines quality of life in relation to the strength of the business. Yet we all recognize that our businesses impact the quality of our lives. I recommend you take our Better Business, Better Life Assessment now to establish a benchmark for your quality of life and assess the strength of your business then return to it once per quarter to track the improvement in your quality of life in your business. You can take our Better Business, Better Life assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Note, there is no charge to take this assessment. It's our gift to you. Although plenty of entrepreneurial coaching programs focus on growing your business, very few focus on improving your quality of life as a primary tool for strengthening your business. Tap the Potential's Better Business, Better Life program does just that and more. The Tap the Potential solution is the guaranteed path to designing a sustainably profitable business that gives you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. Throughout this book, I'll be teaching you the Tap the Potential solution, which is the foundation of our Better Business, Better Life program. Sound good? Great. Let's dive into getting you a better life and a better business. You deserve it. After all, work supports life, not the other way around. Thank you for spending time with us today. Join our conversation in the Entrepreneurs Take Your Life Back Facebook community at tapthepotential.com forward slash group. Share your aha moments from today's episode, ask me questions, and join in on the fun with your fellow entrepreneurs on the journey to designing sustainably profitable businesses that give you more time for what matters most and more money in your bank account than ever. And finally, share today's episode with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. This is real life business. Keep your chin up, keep moving forward. You got this. If you're loving the Profit by Design podcast and have gotten any value out of it for your business or your life, would you mind doing two things? Subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode, and please leave us a review. Our listener reviews help us get into the top 10 of all entrepreneurship podcasts so that more entrepreneurs like you discover us. Your review is critical in helping us make a difference for more entrepreneurs who are ready to take their life back.